welcome back to my channel. I'm Mariah and if you are new here, I'm excited that you're here. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial and it's been a while since I've filmed a tutorial on my channel so I'm super excited to bring this for you guys. And of course, I'm even more excited because it's a product that I love so I can't wait to show it to you guys. So today's look is going to be created with the Lorac Pro 3 palette and this one is gorgeous. It has a lot of different shimmers, mattes, all kinds of different colors, but to me, I feel like it kind of reminds me of like a Naked 3 type palette but with a lot more versatility. So this is the palette that I'm going to be using today, and if you would like to see how I got this look with this palette, just keep on watching. Okay, so I know in my other tutorials I usually started off with the face first, but I want to start with eyes today because I do want a sharp line and I want to use the tape. However, if you do your foundation and concealer first, that tape kind of takes some of the product off. So I always use just regular tape and I kind of put my fingers on it first that way it's not too sticky and it literally like pulls my skin. And then I just go ahead and line that on the edge of my eye. That way I'm going to get a really nice line and you're not going to have to clean up a line at the very end after doing your eyeshadow. And I'll do the same thing to the other side. By the way, I know my voice is a little bit raspy and that is because I've had a cold all week long. I planned on filming this video earlier this week for you guys, but this cold has been awful. So, moving on. So I'm going to start out by priming my eyes with the Maybelline Color Tattoo, and this is in the color Barely Branded. I think it's a really nice base to use on your eyes. It kind of reminds me of like a MAC paint pot, but a little cheaper. So I just dip my finger in there and apply it all over the eyelids. Oh, and look at that on my lip. So ugly. Oh, I hate it. I have a nervous habit of like biting my bottom lip and I totally messed it up yesterday, which I'm really upset about. Moving right along. Now that I have a base for my eyeshadow, I can go ahead and start. So these are the shades in the Lorac Pro palette. I'm going to start off with one that's more like my skin tone. So I'm going to use the color Canvas. So there's the shade right there that I'm going to be using. To be honest, I still don't really love my collection of eyeshadow brushes, so for now I'm going to use the e.l.f. Professional Blending Eye Brush, and this is one of the cheap ones, I think like a dollar. So I'm just going to dip that into the canvas color, and I'm going to apply this all over to kind of set that primer and give the color a nice bright color to start with. I'm actually not going to take that canvas color above to my brow bone because I want to keep that nice and light. This is also going to work as a little bit of a transitional shade, so you can bring it up a little bit past your crease. Okay, moving along, I'm going to take my e.l.f. crease brush. This one is very pointed, so it can get in the crease, but yet it's fluffy on the edges, so it is going to help blend that color out. And I'm going to use the color Clay, which is right here. It's kind of a nude color as well. It serves as a nice neutral, but it's dark enough to darken my crease up. And don't worry if some of your lines look a little bit messy. We're going to clean it all up at the end when we blend. Now the one thing I do want to warn you guys, these shadows, as all other Lorac shadows, are super pigmented. So be careful how much you're applying because it's a lot harder to take it off than it is to add on. So just use a light hand to start with and you can always build your product up. I'm going to go ahead and blend that out just a little bit and I have not found a brush yet that I love as much as this cheap one that I found at Big Lots. It's the brand Soho, it was just a couple bucks. But it's nice and fluffy so it works to blend out those colors. But you can just take this along the crease and use a small circular motion just to blend it out a little bit. You don't want to take the circle too big to where you're dragging it up to your eyebrow and below your crease, but it can blend out just a little bit. So now we have a little bit darker of a crease. I'm going to go ahead and apply my all over lid color. 
So you just want to take any type of flat shading brush that you have. I'm going to use one by Real Techniques and it is the domed shadow brush. So it's still very flat on one side. And usually for the colors that I put on my lid, I want them to be very pigmented and a lot of them are shimmery, which I'm going to use one today. So I just like to spray a little bit of my MAC Fix Plus because it does make your shadows a little bit more pigmented and bright. So I'm just going to put about a spray or two on there. And that goes everywhere. I think the look I want to go for is like a rosy champagne but darkened up maybe a little smoky. So I'm going to use the color Rose Bronze as my all over lid color. So I'm just going to dip my shader brush in there flat and then just pack it on. So you can see that I do have a little bit of fallout in this area, but I will say that these shadows are super messy. If you look at these colors here on the end, you'll see that there's just a lot of fallout that gets all over the place, but that's because these shadows are so soft, which makes them a lot easier to blend. It just gets a little bit messy. So now that we have that, I want to darken up the corners and give this a smoky look. So I'm going to take my Morphe E18 brush, and this is just really small and pointed on the end, and it's a little bit dense, that way you're not getting product all over the place in areas that you don't want it to be. So I'm gonna take this brush, and I'm going to use the colors Dark Mocha and Amethyst. So I'm going to apply that to my outer V, so a little bit in the crease, and then on the edge here. And then we're gonna drag it in just a little bit to the inner corner of the crease. Now I want mine to be a little bit more of like a cat eye, so I'm going to just take that and drag the line up a little bit higher on my tape. And do the same on the other side. So once again, I'm going to use my blending brush just to go ahead and blend that out a little bit so it's not as harsh of a line. Honestly, for a lot of people, they don't take dark colors out of their crease whatsoever, but for me, I bring mine up a little bit because my eyes are a little bit hooded. Best way I can describe it is basically I have a little bit more of a prominent eyebrow bone and the rest of my eyes kind of go back a little bit. So I want to create that crease and bring it up just a little bit past my natural crease line. That way you can still see it when my eyes are all the way open. And I want to darken this look up just a little bit more. So I'm going to use a mixture of the colors truffle and black. I'm only going to use a dab of black because this black is so pigmented. You're going to have a black eye if you use too much. So be careful with that. And I'm really just focusing on that outer V. So we've got a lot of a smoky look going on. It needs to be blended out a little more though, so I'm going to use a smaller brush. And honestly, I don't know the name of this one. It's an e.l.f. brush. I do want to say it's a crease brush as well, but it's a little bit more fluffy, so it's going to allow me to blend with it. So I'm just going to use that to kind of blend the colors in and make them look not as patchy or as sharp. And the reason why I'm not using as much of a circular motion with this part is because you don't want this line going way too high or it's going to make the whole look way too dark. So I kind of use a back and forth motion that way I keep the product exactly where I want it. And that looks a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is go back in with my transition color. So I'm going to use a mixture of canvas and clay and just go back over the crease. That way it is a little bit more blended out and not so dark up high. And that needs blended, blended, blended. 
that's kind of the key to eyeshadow and it took me so long to figure that out that everything needs to be blended and just when you think you're done blend a little bit more so you can always go back in with a lighter color on your brow bone and that will help clean up the look a lot and drag that down just a little bit for me, I just use this brush that I got with my Zala hair extensions. I've used it in every tutorial. Because this is a slanted brush, it's just so easy to get up into a point right where you need it to be. And I always use this for a highlight color on my brow bone so I don't ever have to worry about mixing colors. For my brow bone, I'm going to use a mixture of the colors Blanc and Almond Pearl. Blanc is a very white shade and Almond Pearl has a little bit of that shimmer that I want so that it reflects the light. So we'll see what this looks like. I like that one. So after I have it in the area that I want, I bring it down a little bit so it gives it a really nice smooth transition. To be honest, I don't really think that that rose bronze shade showed up as well as I wanted it to on my lid and it's not as shimmery. So I'm just gonna take that same flat brush from Real Techniques with my MAC Fix Plus, spray a couple sprays so that it's a pigmented color and I'm going to go ahead and use the color Medallion. It's a very shimmery gold bronze color and I really love this one. I can just feel the fallout hitting my cheek. <laughs> I think that just gave it a lot more of a shimmery look and that's the look I'm going for. So I'm happier with that and now I need to blend the colors together again. I look like I have a black eye from all this fallout underneath. First I'm going to do my brows and right now I've really been loving the Wet n Wild Fergie and this is actually an eyeliner and it's in the color Coco Riche. I think. I don't know if that's how you say it. But I really like this one because it's easy to work with and I always apply my brow products with my e.l.f. small angled brush. So I'm just going to dip that in there and I always start on the bottom of my brow. So as you can see, I'm just dragging the product up as more and more is running out so that it's not too sharp of a line and it's not too overdrawn and fake looking. Do you see that? It's awful. It looks almost like a spider bite, but of course it's a breakout right before filming like it always does. My brows are really working with me today and I'm pretty happy about it. Most people hope for good hair days, I hope for good brow days. So I'm going to leave the brows there before I mess them up and I'm going to go ahead and do eyeliner. Now lately I've been using a combination, I really love the Milani Supreme Coal Eyeliner. First of all, look at the packaging. I love it, it's gold. But I use this just to line my eyeliner and then I go ahead and go in with, of course, the Maybelline Line Stiletto, my favorite liquid eyeliner, especially for a wing, which I always do, let's be real. And I know I'm not supposed to pull on my eyes. If you can avoid it, definitely do it because it's so bad for your eyes, but just ignore that. And if this part of the eyeliner isn't totally straight, it's okay because you can fix that when you go in with the liquid eyeliner and go over it anyways. And like I said, Maybelline Line Stiletto, I love it because it is so pointed and it's really easy to work with with the felt tip. I envy those girls who can do a wing on one swipe. It's insane. So for mascara, I'm going to use the Too Faced Mascara. This is just a deluxe size. And I'm not going to worry about too many layers because I'm going to put on false lashes. Anyways. Okay, so now we're going to do the bottom lash line and lashes. I'm going to take my e.l.f. flat eyeliner brush 
And I'm going to use the colors Dark Mocha and Amethyst on the outer edge of my eye. And I don't know if this ever happens to anybody else, but I am terrified of this step because if I ever get any eyeshadow like in my eyeball, like if I use too much and some of the powder gets in there, my eyes water literally all day long and I can't stand it. So I kind of usually avoid this step on a normal day basis, but for this look, I need it. So let's cross our fingers and hope it works because color contacts and powder in the eye probably wouldn't do well. Tap the excess. Then I'm going to take this e.l.f. brush, and I think this one is called the smudger brush. I'm not totally sure, but it kind of is skinny like that flat one, but I'm going to use this to smudge out the color. Alright, now I'm going to use the mascara and go ahead and apply it to my bottom lashes. I can't wait to cover up this. Ugh. All right, so we're gonna let that dry and I'm going to go ahead and apply my false lashes. So for today, I'm just going to be using the Ardell 117 and I'm going to use my Duo Dark Toned Glue and my Ardell Tweezers. And this part's always fun. Lashes have gotta be my least favorite part of makeup, not because I don't like them, because I love the look of lashes, but they are so tedious and you have to go slow and you have to be patient which I am none of the above, so it doesn't ever really work out that well for me, but I like how it looks in the end. Let's do this. And now I need to tweeze my natural lashes and the falsies together. So to be honest, those are not as close to my lash line as they should be, but whatever. Not gonna redo them. Moving on. I wish I had the patience to do those individual lashes because I'd totally do them on my bottom lash line and customize my top, but <sighs> I just don't have the patience, you know? Woo, woo. False lashes are done. Thank the Lord. We're almost done with the eyes, finally. So I'm just gonna go back over my regular lashes and my falsies with the Too Faced mascara one more time just to kind of pull the look together and give it a little bit more va va va. So there you have the eyes, they are all done, and now we're ready to move on to the face. I am loving lately my Too Faced Primed and Poreless Primer, so I'm going to go ahead and apply that to my face. So you guys, I don't know if it's just me, but as you can tell, every single time I apply primer to my face, it gets so red, like it hates it. Anywho, oh my battery's dying again. We're gonna quickly apply the Too Faced Born This Way foundation, and mine is in the color Warm Nude, and I'm going to be using my Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge to apply this. And for concealer, I'm still loving my MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in the color NW20. I'm going to apply that to the pointed side of my Miracle Complexion Sponge and put it under my eyes, on my forehead and nose, and my chin. I don't like to finish all of my concealer before setting my under eyes because I don't want those to crease. So I always like to set that with my Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. And I'm using the Real Techniques Setting Brush for that. And I just look up and use the powder to set. Now continue my concealer. It's super difficult to do your eyes first because of trying to work around your eyebrows, your eyelashes, your winged liner, all of that. Super tricky. Then I'm going to set all of that once again with the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. And lately I've been taking a little bit of the extra setting powder and using it all over my face with the Real Techniques Powder Brush just because I feel like it sets that foundation right before I go in with any powdered products and it makes it all even and smooth. So next is bronzer and I still haven't found a bronzer that I love more than the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit in the color Fawn. So I'm going to use that along with my e.l.f. small tapered brush to contour my cheekbones. And my nose. And then I use that same fawn powder from the contour kit along with my e.l.f. blending brush 
And I like to contour my forehead. All right, so we're gonna try and finish this before my battery does, and I'm going to go ahead and do my blush. I have been loving the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani blush palette. Originally, I wasn't planning on buying this until it went on sale, and now I'm absolutely obsessed with it, so I'm so glad that I did. For today's blush, I'm going to go in with a mixture of Hush and Easy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix the two of those together and apply that to my cheekbone. So as you can see, it is super duper pigmented. I love the colors, I think they're gorgeous. To apply the blush, I use the Real Techniques blush brush. For a highlight, I'm actually going to use the shade in this Gwen Stefani palette called Angel, and I'm using the Morphe M501. Really, I don't understand why I haven't heard more people talking about that palette. It's my absolute favorite for blushes right now, and even the highlighter is absolutely amazing. So now all we have left to do is lips. As always, I'm going to start with my Bite Lip Primer. All right, so I have to finish filming quickly because it just started storming out of nowhere and my power keeps flickering and I can't lose power for this. I need my lights. So, there it went, did you see it? I'm using the Rimmel Exaggerate Easton Snob Lip Liner, as always. I kind of like the look just with the lip liner. Hmm. I was going to use a mixture of my color jolts, but I really don't want to mess it up. And I really like how this looks right now with lip liner. So, that's it. That's it. That's all I'm doing. I really hope you guys enjoyed this look. I know I did, and I am loving my Lorac Pro 3 palette. If you haven't already, get your hands on one of these because they're absolutely amazing. You can create so many looks with the shimmers, the mattes, the darks, the lights. It has everything that you could... <gasps> there went my power. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, and I hope to see every one of you in my next video. Bye! Today, So my camera battery died twice. I know, I need to invest in a backup. Trust me, I'm going to. Then, on top of that, it started storming, and the storm started causing my power to flicker on and off, which I was freaking out because it's kind of hard to film a video when it's dark outside without your lights. It's not gonna happen. Wow. Uh, that's bad. Do you see all that under there? Looks like it went under my tape. Yikes. We're gonna take the tape off before we do eyeliner, I guess. Ugh. I don't like this wing at all. Oh, I just got lash glue on my pants. This is why I hate lashes. Hate them. First off, I just want to give you guys... Do you hear that thunder? Ooh. And that's a wrap.